The G55 Series 1 is a rank 3 battle rating 5.0 fighter for Italy that was introduced in update 1.69 Regia Aeronautica. I probably completely butchered that pronunciation. I'm sorry if I did. But the G55 Series 1 is very powerful and I feel like it's overlooked a lot of the time. And today I'm going to fly it out for you and give it a review. In real life, the G55 was meant to destroy American bombers during World War II. They were produced in 1943 in a quite small amount before the Italian armistice later that year. They had a relatively short service life too, as they were later replaced by BF-109s until after the war due to limited production. According to Wikipedia, so take that however you want, the Germans actually regarded the G55 as the best Axis fighter. Anyway, moving on from the 30 second history lesson, I feel that many players, including myself, have overlooked the Italian tech tree below tier 5 because I don't really hear much discussion around any of the Italian props. Recently, I sort of felt like playing some props again just because I've been playing too many jets lately and I felt the G55 wasn't a bad choice. The G55 Series 1 has a very strong armament. It gets three 20mm MG151 cannons that vaporize any aircraft they come across and two 12.7mm machine guns. It can also carry two 100kg bombs, but in Air RB there is not really much of a point in carrying them in the first place. Moving on to performance. It has very strong engine power, a solid climb rate on par with almost everything else at its battle rating, very strong turning ability, and great energy fighting potential. Combining all of these abilities makes it a formidable opponent for whoever is trying to take you out. As far as weaknesses go, this aircraft has a fairly lightweight construction which hinders its vertical fighting capability. With that said, however, you may be able to use this to your advantage in certain situations. For example, if you and your opponent are in a sort of fight that takes a turn for the vertical, this may actually save you from overshooting your opponent and keeping you behind them, enabling you to more easily get your guns on target and keep them there. Something I've noticed at this battle rating while using this aircraft is the fact that a lot of the time the teams are small and my team would have a whole bunch of JU-288s. This almost always would incentivize all of the enemy team, usually American teams, to dive straight for these guys throwing away all of their altitude in favor for, of a quick kill. As I'm sure you could probably guess, this leads to a lot of wins for my team and I. The only times I ever really have trouble is when there are groups of XP-50s rocket climbing above me or Spitfire players who know what they are doing. As far as strategy goes for me, I just climb straight towards the enemies and usually I end up at the same altitude as them and in that situation I'm fairly confident I can win those 1v1s. Then after the first initial fight, I work my way downwards trying my best to take out the highest enemy each engagement. So with all of that said, I'm going to show you a couple of fights. Okay, here's something that doesn't happen very often. Getting in a fight with a zero. Now, I try to avoid this almost at all costs, just because I'm sure all of you know the zero's incredible maneuverability, but I felt confident enough to take him on given this situation. Now, I kind of make a mistake here and hesitate a little too much on trying to decide what I'm going to do, but luckily he misses his shots, giving me a second chance. Being a zero, you have a crazy amount of maneuverability, but not much else, so this is why I'm going to be able to pull away from him in this climb and turn. When he realizes he's not going to be able to catch me, he puts his nose down, and, and I do the exact same. However, unfortunately, he's going to give a sharp turn, and I'm not going to be able to get my guns on target, but that's okay. At this point, I very much have the energy advantage, so I'm just going to pitch up knowing he won't be able to get all the way to me. He starts taking some long range shots and I try and just make it hard to hit. And I'm going to level out my zoom climb and then wait for him to stall out then put my nose down trying to get my guns on. Luckily I time this just about perfectly right when he's at his lowest speed and that's going to secure me the kill. This fight was honestly pretty satisfying, now it wasn't obviously anything crazy but winning a fight against a zero is not an easy one especially if you both start at the same energy level. Now, obviously a main mistake that a lot of newer players would make is just instantly start turning trying to get their nose on the zero as quickly as possible, which that will always guarantee your death when you're flying against a zero. Now the G55 has a very tight turning circle, but it's not going to compete with a Japanese zero in that aspect. 
In fact, it won't turn with the majority of the Japanese fighters because the vast majority of them turn like crazy. All right, now into fight number two. Um, this one was a fight I really, really enjoyed. The guy I was going against, I felt he knew what he was doing and he actually had my, his eye on me the whole time while we were fighting as I did him. So right now, as you see, I'm putting my nose straight up to try and bleed a bit of energy to try and get a shot on this first turn. Thought I had it in the bag, but at the very last second, he turns away just out of my out of reach for my guns. But that little maneuver is going to put him in a stall. But luckily for him, I'm at a very low speed as well, so I'm not going to really going to be able to capitalize on this. Once again, I think I'm going to get my guns on right here, but he moves away at the very last second. So now we're both going downwards, picking up a little bit more speed. Both of us just trying to get on each other's tail. Right here, he actually fakes me out pretty well, and I completely just fumble whatever I was trying to do, and no shot for me. So, I put my nose up again, trying to bleed some more speed, but I actually make a bit of a mistake here and start pitching back down. I should have kept going the same direction I was, because that way he wouldn't have got his guns on target, but right here, he's actually going to get some shots off, but luckily the one he hits isn't going to do anything, and then he starts stalling out. So now, he's a bit slower than I am, and we're at the same altitude, which means I have that sweet energy advantage, so I'm going to start a horizontal turn fight. As it turns out, one of my teammates shows up and tries to take a head on with him, but neither of them go down. So I now put my nose down, realizing he's straightened out and gone the other way, thinking I'll be able to get on his tail pretty easily. Now, while I think I'm going to be on his tail and have a nice easy shot, he starts shedding lots of altitude, and honestly I didn't really feel that comfortable doing that, so I was kind of approaching this with some caution. Honestly though, it's understandable he gets tries to get away, because two of my teammates rolled up as we were fighting, so I probably would have done the same thing. I did notice to my left an AM1, and since he was at a higher altitude, he ended up needing to be the priority, so I do go kill him. So now it's much later in the match, and I was flying around trying to fly into the last few guys, after getting a couple more kills, and... As it turns out, the Yak-3 that I was fighting earlier was taking off from his runway and he appears right below me. So I initiate dogfight number two. He pitches up and out of the way, but that's no problem for me at all because I am at a much, much higher energy, energy state than him, so I'm just going to pull away and re-engage. Unfortunately for me, he flies back towards its base near all of those laser beam AA guns, so I fly away. I probably would have done the same thing given that situation. As soon as he notices me pulling away from his airfield though, he turns around and pursues. So I'm going to take this opportunity to pull him away from his airfield as far as possible. So I don't really know anything about the Yak-3U, but he caught up to me pretty quickly as I was flying away. He's just now getting in gun range. And as soon as I see those shots come off, I'm going to take some evasive maneuvers and start a fight. So I put my nose down and left trying to get away from his guns. Get very lucky right here that none of his bullets hit me. And now he's at a much higher speed than me, which means I'll have a chance to get my guns on. He turns in front of me. Take a shot, but no hits. One more turn, and I'm still going to be able to get my guns on target just because of this thing's superior low speed maneuverability. Got a crit. Now he's damaged, so the rest of the fight should be pretty easy. He, for a moment, pulls away, maybe thinking he can get away, but I don't think that's going to happen. I start taking a few shots, trying to secure this kill. He puts his nose up. And I'm going to get a shot off. Hurt his left wing a bit, just a little more damage. And now at this point, there is pretty much nothing he can do. I stick my nose down, just trying to catch up to him. Start taking off some longer range shots. Miss a bit, but that's okay. Going to get a little closer and secure my kill. This one was a lot of fun. Very well fought by Mr. Texback. Alright, I am going to show you just one more match. I did have two more, but I feel this video is running a bit longer than I wanted it to, so I'm going to cut it off after this one. So, as you can see, there are three XP-50s way above me, along with a P-61. Now, this is obviously not an optimal situation, but we're going to make it work. So, one of the XP-50s is diving on me, and I'm just going to do my best to stay out of his guns. Luckily, I'm not hurt. He starts flying away, but not quickly enough, and I'm going to get my guns on target for a very nice first kill. 
As soon as I looked behind me, I was definitely expecting a second XP-50 to be right there, but luckily the other two actually played kinda smart and stayed up high. At least it's lucky for the immediate situation, but that's still not exactly optimal. And now it appears my teammate's in a little bit of trouble, so I'm gonna head over there and hopefully get there before he dies. So skipping forward a little bit, they ended up taking out my teammate before I could get there and help, and after he was dead they ended up climbing the other direction just to get away from me and my teammate. Anyway, I get a little ballsy with this head on, luckily I don't get taken out, but I get a crit on him. Definitely not taking a second head on with the other XP-50, so I pitch down and get out of his guns. Now when I start pitching back up, which is already a gamble of a maneuver, they both follow me so I assume I'm probably dead, because I was at a pretty low speed, but luckily, they both switch targets and go for my teammate. And now I'm going to be put directly on this XP-50's tail. Get my guns lined up and take some long range shots do a bit of damage but nothing substantial, and as I get closer I just start whiffing all my shots, so that's a bit unfortunate. And then to keep myself from overshooting, I do a little swivel left and come around up top. With him being damaged, I'm feeling pretty confident at the moment, especially with my teammate around. At this point, he's about to pitch down. He's gonna head down for just a second, and then I'm gonna line up some shots, start missing a bunch, don't wanna hit my teammate, and then I get him and secure the kill. Now with him out of the match, all we have to worry about now is the one XP-50 above and behind us. I start looking at him seeing what he's doing, and I realize he's going to come for me first. So I start turning now, just so it'll be harder for him to aim when he gets close enough to shoot. I try my best to make myself a hard target to hit, which works pretty well. He fires off one little shot, but it completely misses, which is great for me. Now he's moving pretty fast, I roll over on top of him, take a shot, get a hit, now I'll be on his tail, take some more long range shots, and just similar to that first kill, take him out as he's pulling away from me. Kinda just wanted to show this fight because it was a bit of an unlikely win from my perspective, considering they all started above me. So in light of everything I've said today, I think the G55 Series 1 is a fantastic fighter for Italy, and does a lot of things really, really well. It's very maneuverable, has a very tight turning circle, has fantastic guns, and can hold its own in an energy fight. What do you think about the G55 Series 1? Do you think it stacks up with the rest of the Italian aircraft? Let me know what you think in the comments. If you like what you see here, hit the like button and subscribe. I've got lots of other videos like this and a lot more to come. So on that, I'll see you next time. Peace.